Greetings everyone and welcome back to Shaky Cam Land where I'm in the midst of repairing or hopefully repairing I don't know how this is going to turn out this Carver M-400T magnetic field power amplifier I think they call it but yeah we left off in the other video I had determined that several capacitors on the power amplifier boards were bad and I hadn't test tested to this board yet the power supply board but now I have and here's what I found quite surprisingly all of these little electrolytic capacitors are fine even the one hiding back there I figured, well, at least one of them would be bad because they were all bad on here, just about. But these are just fine. And I tested the diodes and all the transistors. And uh, this test to be open, I mean, when it's powered down, it's off, this triac here. So it's working because this is in series with the mains in the power transformer primary. So apparently this circuit is working because you know it powers up, but it powers up into a short due to that one capacitor that's bad. Where is it? This one here, dead shorted cap. I also tested these without anything connected, able to get a reading from my meter and they they test fine and then I did some ESR tests. Now these two here and these bottom two are in parallel with each other, but I did get you know double the reading, they're 220. I'm sorry, they're 2200 microfarads each. So, I'm not going to bother with these because they test fine. Now, if this was your project, sure, you can recap everything if you want, but if they're good, I'm not going to. You know, I, I try to minimize the expenditures on this stuff, and if the part tests good, I don't see a reason to replace it. Though, yeah, the can be some argument to why you might want to. I'm trying my darndest not to have to spend any money on this project, but it looks like I might have to. But at least with these capacitors here, I can use a substitute. These here are 100 volt caps and I don't have them in stock, that value. So I wanted to know if I could use a substitute value. I have these 15 microfarads and these are 4.7 so I looked at the schematic and it turns out these are just filter caps for the front end they're on the 75 volt rail so you have the power supply 75 volt rail feeding the you know the uh, later stages of the amplifier then it goes to a resistor and then the capacitor is in parallel from the rail to ground. So it's a filter for the front end of the amplifier. It was not used in the earlier versions of the amplifier. And uh, you know, looking at some date codes, this thing has 84 and 85 date codes, so it's a later version. Hopefully, uh, a lot of the bug fixes were incorporated. I know they changed the design a little bit to fix some issues. And that's one thing they did is add the filter caps to the high rails for the input section, or I should say the front end section of the uh, power amplifier. So, I have these out of old CFLs or LEDs whatever the case they may be and they test good 
low ESR and everything. They'll work just fine. They're 15 microfarads, whereas these were 4.7. And no problem. You can use these. It won't hurt anything at all. Now I should have all the other values, these smaller caps. Most of these are bad. These caps test good. These 470, 10 volt ones. And I don't see a point in changing them. Where is it? Over here. On this one. The boards are kind of reversed from each other. Because one fits upside down. But anyway. Yeah. Um, no reason to replace it. Because those good are good. Let's say that again. Those test good. But pretty much... All the other caps are somewhere between halfway dead or completely dead. Okay, so this is where I might have to spend some money if I want to fix this properly. And, well, if you remember from the last video, this high rail filter cap is bad, dead short. The other one is perfect, low ESR, correct value, it's not leaky or anything. That one's good. So I had that other amplifier I scavenged these parts from. I will like to finish that amplifier at some point, or I should say fix it, but just to test this thing out, I was hoping to scavenge one of these parts and well it's not going to turn out so well this one is dead open and this one is weak high esr it reads about half the value it should be i mean it's usable for a test i think it's not that bad but to completely fix this thing i'm going to have to buy a replacement cap Probably, well, if I want to fix the other amplifier, I'll have to buy a set of four of these things. So, yeah, I'll have to spend money there. But, for now, I think I'll just use this one as a test to make sure this works. Because it still has some value in it. Okay, the amp is reassembled. All the caps are in. Cleaned it up. Found an old paintbrush. Those are good for, you know, kind of getting the dust out without bending and stressing the components. All the transistors are in. Made sure I put the mica washers back in for the drivers and get them assembled. It's nice having that Extendo mini tool kit to get down in there because. You have to put all these in with these boards plugged into one another's. No way around it. So yeah, looking good. You got some of these components so close together I couldn't mount the cap all the way down on the board. One little tip with capacitors. I always preform the leads if the holes don't match up. Because if you just shove it in there you could be stretching that rubber bung on the bottom of the capacitor where the lead goes in and it could possibly cause a slow leak. So preform the leads to match the hole spacing and then put it in on the board there and you should be good. Here's the capacitors I popped out and yeah quite a few of them had pretty good values it was just the ESR was high so you know if you measure it with a meter that just checks capacitance it's not going to give you the whole story so let's take one of these for an example here and pop it in the tester so these are supposed to be 4.7 microfarads and it's reading a bit high about 6 but look at the ESR is 140 ohms. V loss is kind of high as well. 
Well, these are meant for stiffening up the rails, and they're not going to do a very good job at that with such a high ESR. Here's another example of one. It's supposed to be 22 microfarads, and it's reading 1 microfarad and 140 ohms, so pretty bad all around. Here's a good example of why you got to test for ESR. This one is 22 microfarads, and it's pretty close, around 20. So you might say, eh, good enough. But if you look at the ESR, it's 91 ohms. Eh, a little bit high there, I would say. A lot high. And here's another example for you. This is out of my new stock. I measured it. It's supposed to be 22. And it's measuring low. ESR is not too bad. But it's a new capacitor, and it's measuring low. I mean, it's probably a few years old. It's been in my new stock for a while, but... Yeah, I check all the capacitors that are going to go in as replacements. Make sure they're in good shape. Like I said earlier, I'm using the cap from the other amp. Not the best of shape. It's down quite a bit on capacitance. Up a little bit on ESR. But it'll work well enough just to do a basic go-no-go -no -go test. I did find replacements for $20 a piece. So if I buy two for this amp and two for the other, that's about 80 bucks. But I'm going to buy just one for now because money's a bit tight for me. Going into a recession, I think, which is not really a bad thing. It'll get a handle on this crazy inflation. In fact, if you go look at commodity prices, they're starting to fall quite a bit. Okay, let's power this thing up. It's on the bulb limiter. Went bright and then dim. You can hear that thing humming. I mean, after all, it's got essentially a thyristor type light dimmer in it. Triac. But the thing is pretty quiet. I mean, I can hear a slight buzz if I put my ear on the tweeter. But the camera's just not going to pick it up. In fact, you can probably hear the, the buzz from the transformer over anything else. Okay, so I'm going to hook some music up to it. I, I know it works because I've played it for a couple hours already. Okay, let's do some YouTube safe stuff here. Russian dance. Sounds just fine to me. It sounds just like any other amp I hook up to the speakers and play that through. I'm checking the fuse in this thing. A 32 volt, 15 amp fuse. Huh. Same thing in the other amp. So did that come out of the factory like that? That's kind of weird. Well, I downloaded the service manual. Plus it says somewhere on it that it uses a 15 amp fuse. The service manual says it can draw 14 amps. But, yeah, it's hard to believe. You know, even at, say, 600 watts. I forget what the maximum output is. But bridge mode, maybe 600. But if you factor in the efficiency of a class AB amp, yeah, it might go up to close to a thousand watts, and that would be only temporary, short term. And that little power transform, that little power transformer would smoke. That was sustained too long. Either way, I don't feel comfortable. I would back it down to eight amp, 
see how that holds. I would stick with 8 ohm loads anyway, but yeah, and back it down. But looking through all my fuses, I got all these when Radio Shack was going out of business. Had the big discounts. You can get these for like 25 cents a piece per bag there. Or when you can afford, right? Well, best I could find was a 6 amp fuse, so I'm going to pop that in there. I'll have to get some 8 amp fuses. But yeah, I just feel more comfortable not using such a high rated fuse. A 15 amp fuse seems way overkill to me. Of course, the reason for the 15 amp fuse might be inrush as well, because I notice the lights flicker when you plug this thing in. It doesn't have a power switch. So I'll have to see how an 8 amp fuse would hold. It's holding with the 6 amp fuse at least. Another thing I did is check the supply rails. I have it plugged directly into the mains now. My voltage is kind of high here, it's 124 volts. But I wanted to make sure I'm not stressing the capacitors. So turning this dial this way, this controls the uh, triac triggering. And uh, so it would lower the voltage a bit. So I'm running it now with the uh, low rails at 22 volts, 46 volt on the mid rail, and 73 on the high rail. The reason for that is the voltage between the mid and low rail is 24 volts at this setting. At the setting before it was just over 25 volts. And uh, the capacitors here for the mid rail are connected between the mid and low rail if I remember correctly. So that would be stressing them. So I want to give them a, at least a tiny bit of headroom. Also, I check the negative voltage are the same for the negative rail side. And there's also a plus and minus 12 volt rails used for the little meter and the op amps. And those are measuring perfect. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to do is order that capacitor and pop it in when I get it. And then I'll run it through some tests. There's some tests in the service manual that you can do. But... You know, from what I've seen, I think it's working fine. You know, I didn't find any shorted silicon or anything out of whack. We got new caps in there. I know some of those caps are related to the commutation circuitry and may not work properly if the bad caps are in there. But yeah, I don't expect to find anything major wrong with this. But I'll check it out here when I get the new caps in and do a video at that point, which will be sometime in the future. I don't know when, but for now, I say this thing is working pretty good. Okay, so what about the other amp? This is the M400. This is the one I just worked on, the M400T. I put masking tape around the side because it has that greasy silicone um, thermal grease on it and these are pretty messy amps they got uh, thermal compound all over them but anyway this one has date codes from 1985 the latest so this thing might have been sold in 85 or 86 so definitely a later version this one has date codes from 1980, so a much earlier version. And as you look at these boards, notice how much different they are from one another. So, you know, this is after... I know they had a lot of revisions and changes. So, you know, this is the later amp. Hopefully they shook a lot of the bugs out of it. This one might have some bugs left in. There is service bulletins, and they give you uh, serial number ranges, and they tell you what fixes and things have to be incorporated. This one, let's see here. 
There's the serial number. I think a few of the changes are before the serial number, so that's good. Also, this this was dropped in shipping or something, and the bottom's bent. Hopefully, it didn't mess anything up. But as you remember from the very beginning of you know the first video I made on servicing this one. This one, of course, had the shorted capacitor. But this one, I was getting music through it with some buzzing. And one of the rail caps was wide open. So I think it's probably just rail cap or, uh, you know, capacitor replacement work is going to be done. You know, kind of boring, just changing caps. But yeah, I have a feeling that's just what this thing's going to need. Of course, I have to do the service manual test to see if it's going to be fixed. But because of the cost of these caps, I'm going to have to buy two of them for 40 And I need one for this one. Because, like I say, I'm borrowing this one from that. And it's not in good shape. So I'll probably uh, put this aside and save it for a few months. You know, another thing I could do is just temporarily solder in some capacitors and that way I can work on it and get it going and then buy the the main filter caps. But yeah, that's an, always an option. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here for the Carver Magnetic Field Power Amplifier M400 and M400T. And I thank you for watching.